interesting reading, kind of tough to wade through, but I've got the paper at home. Here it says sample number 454 is 17,000 years old. Sample 455 is 24,000 years old. But if you read, it says this is the same sample as 454. Interesting. Sample number 299 is less than 20,000 years old. Sample L137X is greater than 28,000, and yet it's the same sample as 299. You go through and you wade through this and you find out they simply do not know, okay? Um, we could talk a long time about carbon dating. The other one commonly used is uh, the idea that the universe is billions of years old because of the stars, you know, being so-called billions of light years away. The stars may indeed be billions of light years away. I would never argue that they're not, but I certainly would argue that we do not know that the speed of light has been a constant. I also would argue we cannot prove the distance to the stars. They probably are billions of light years away, but we, d we can't measure beyond about 100 light years. And you don't know, we don't know what light is, okay? Um, at Harvard University in 1999, they slowed light down to 38 miles an hour. The next year, they slowed it down to one mile an hour. The next year, they brought it to a full stop. The speed of light was brought to zero done at Harvard University and Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics and also done at Cambridge. At Princeton University, they speeded light up to 300 times the speed of light. Um, speed of light has decreased rapidly in the observable time span. Here's a chart showing the decline of the speed of light. Uh, we could talk a long time about that. Here's a couple of quick quotes here. The speed of light was apparently exceeded by a factor of as much as 100 in two published experiments. Uh, the speed of light was 10 billion times faster at time zero uh, speed of light may have changed over history, the study says. This is August of 2001. Now we've got the entire article here if you'd like to read that. Um, the shocking possibility is the speed of light might change in time during the life of the universe. So I think we do not know that the speed of light has always been consistent. So typically the most common arguments for a great age for the universe are the speed of light, you know, the distance to the stars, and the uh, radiometric decay. Now, it doesn't matter which radiometric decay you use, be it potassium argon, rubidium strontium, lead 208, lead 20, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, they're all based on obvious assumptions. 80% of potassium in a small sample can be removed by distilled water in four and a half hours. Um, you mentioned skull, uh, KNMER1470. Uh, Richard Leakey found this skull, 1972. Before he found it, the KBS tuff had been dated by many methods at being 212 million years old. When Leakey's uh, famous KNMER1470 -E, -E skull was found in 1972, under the KBS tuff, it really caused quite a ruckus in the paleontolo paleontological community because um, you can't have a human skull that old. So they quickly decided, well, we must have misdated the KBS tuff. Even though it had been dated many times before, including Nature Magazine, April 18, 1970, they said the KBS stuff is 212 to 230 million years old. Richard Leakey finds a perfectly or relatively normal human skull, and obviously a skull, under the KBS tuff. Well, they said it uh, can't be, something's wrong here. So they redated the KBS tuff. It took 10 samples, and now the numbers range from 0.5 to 2.6. That's a 500% error. Your Honor, I don't think they know. Uh, we mentioned how the age of the Earth uh, has been inflated down through years, you know, going from 70,000 to uh, now current 4.6 billion. The Earth is getting older, 21 million years per year. Um, basalt from Mount Etna in Sicily was potassium argon dated at a quarter million years old, yet they knew the lava flow was just shortly before the time of Christ. Hawaiian lava flow, 1801, was potassium argon dated at 1.6 million years old. It's only 200. Uh, Mount, uh, however you pronounce that, in Hawaii was 8.5 million years old from a 1959 lava flow. Uh, Mount Etna in Sicily, I climbed Mount Etna. Um, it dated 70, 700,000 years old. Here's another one from 300,000. The new lava dome in Mount St. Helens, 1980 eruption. The new lava dome was built over the next few years. Lava samples were taken fresh. And they gave ages of anywhere from 0.35 million, that's 350,000, to 2.8 million for lava that is brand new. So when you date a sample of known age, it doesn't work. When you date a sample of unknown age, it is assumed to work. <laughs> so we have God's word that the world was made in six days, about 6,000 years ago. We have God's word that tells us there was no death until Adam sinned. 
We have human records going back about five or 6,000 years maximum. Uh, we have many examples of uh, geologic features that are simply indicating the universe cannot be billions of years old. Erosion rates of mountains, for instance, indicate that at the current erosion rate, the mountains will erode flat in 14 million years. And yet they tell us we have fossils that are 300 times older than that, still above sea level. They should have been recycled, washed out to sea 300 times at the current rate of erosion that we observe. Um, we observe all sorts of physical uh, factors that tell us, that, that put limits on the age of the universe. And I think I would just as soon trust God's word until it's proven wrong, as opposed to doubt God's word until it's proven right. So that's my position. Coexisted, uh, which is uh, accurate. Dr. White, we'll start with you. Right. A couple of years ago, I visited uh, the Creation Evidences Museum in uh, Glen Rose, Texas, uh, just outside the uh, boundaries of Dinosaur Valley State Park, um, which uh, includes the bed of the Paluxy River, which is a famous place where dinosaur tracks, uh, including entire trackways, uh, have been found. Uh, this, is a, um, uh, this is a very famous um, uh, location in the creationist uh, uh, literature. This museum was set up to demonstrate uh, human footprints and even human trackways uh, that had been found there. And for a while, um, you know, it was featured in documentaries like The uh, Mysterious Origins of Man and uh, things of that nature. Uh, the problem is, I'm confused here again, uh, recently, the uh, Institute for Creation Research, based out in uh, Southern California, in the San Diego area, um, issued, an, uh, uh, issued a report on the uh, human tracks from the Paluxy River, uh, in, which, um, uh, in which they argued that they were not actually human tracks. They were either more or less chance uh, depressions in the rock that happened to look like a track, uh, or, in some cases, uh, they were produced by humans, but not with feet, uh, with chisels. There's a couple of those that uh, appear to be suspicious in that regard. And there's others that appear to be dinosaur tracks that have weathered in an odd way. And uh, this, was not, uh, this was not the conclusion of the evolutionary establishments. Uh, this was John Morris, uh, son of the uh, well-known uh, creationist Henry Morris, who wrote several of the books on that table. Uh, so recently, they've had to uh, withdraw uh, some of the evidence for dinosaurs and uh, uh, and humans walking to um, uh, walking together. Um, on the other hand, uh, Dr. Carl Bau, who operates the um, operates the museum right there, is uh, certainly convinced of their reality. He has uh, what well, it looked to me like a rock, but he told me it was a fossil human finger, and he's got a PhD. Who am I to doubt him? Uh, uh, so clearly there is, there is uh, uh, argument on both sides within the creationist camp, and I'm not quite sure what I should teach other than that I should probably present you know, the idea that humans and dinosaurs coexisted and that they didn't, and um, leave the students free to make up their own minds. But that's really all I know on the topic, and I'm sure Dr. Hovind will enlighten you uh, further. I would be honored to do such a thing. Wonderful. Uh, it's pretty clear known biological fact that reptiles grow all their life. They simply never stop growing. And there's a long technical reason for why with the you know, growth plates at the end of the bones, etc. Reptiles grow all their life. So if a reptile were allowed to live to be eight or 900 years old, it would, act, it would be gigantic.